got a song I want to sing to you. If y'all are letting me out, so sing this to you. say one more thing to you. Some say I'm, I'm a member. <laughs> I'm on the deacon road. Y'all watch it. You better be careful what you say to them. Let me tell y'all what they'll do. They'll drop their religion and get you told. Let me tell you what you got to do. You got to read the word of God. And the word will show you the right way. So don't you leave empty hands. Don't leave empty heart. Whatever you do, don't.
you woke up this morning so go ahead and praise him did you know you were created to worship you were created to lift up the name of Jesus hallelujah oh we bless your name Jesus there's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord as a matter of fact he says in his presence there's fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures evermore hallelujah father we thank you that we can come before you this morning hallelujah Hallelujah to name Jesus. Oh.
So all my days on earth I will away. The moment we see Jesus face to face. And nothing in this world will satisfy. I said nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, nothing in this world will satisfy. Cause Jesus, he's a cup that won't run dry. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. You're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, say, Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, say, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, see that today. Say, Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, say, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus. You're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, sing that again. Say, Jesus. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, just call his name. Everybody say, Jesus. 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 Call on him. Jesus. Come on, say. Jesus. Come on, sing his name. Jesus. He will save your soul. Jesus. He will make you whole. Jesus. He will free your mind. Jesus. Call on him, say. Jesus. Nobody like him. Jesus. Nobody stronger, Jesus. nobody greater. Jesus. Call on them. Jesus. Come on, say. Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, say. Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Let me hear you say that. Jesus, say. Jesus. You're the cup that won't run dry. Everybody lift your voice and say, Jesus. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. How many of you know that today? He's living water, say, Jesus. You're the cup that won't run dry. Come on, sing that one more time. Say, Jesus. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence. Your presence. Oh, hallelujah. We just want to be where you are, God, every single day. Hallelujah to your name. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy. How many of you need Jesus to move in your life? You need something. Whether it's a miracle, you may need a breakthrough. Wherever it is, know that he is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Way maker, say. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That's who we know him as. He's a way maker. Way maker. Miracle work. Promise keep. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. We worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Turning lines around. Turning lines around. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, say I worship. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Healing every heart. Take healing every heart. I worship you. I worship. I worship, I worship you. Come on, say you are here. You are here. Turning lives around. Turning lives around. I worship. 
worship you. I worship you. Come on, say I worship you. I worship you. Come on, we call and we call you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, sing that like you believe it. We call you Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker. Say Promise Say hey, you are here. You are here. Healing every heart. Healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, Lord. You are here. Turning lives around. Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. We call you Waymaker, say, Waymaker, hey, fearing for work, promise keeper, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, sing that again. We call you Waymaker, say, Sing way back up, way back up, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who Come on, sing it like you believe it in yourself. Come on, we call you way back up, say. Even if you yeah. don't see it, he's working. Even if you don't feel it, he, he ne never stops. He never stops work. Hey! He never stops. He never stops. Even if I don't see it, say. Even if I don't see it, he's working. Even if I don't feel it. Even if I don't feel what? it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops. Come on, come he on. Never he never stops working. He never hey! Stops. Even if I don't see it, say. Even if I don't see it, you're even if I don't feel it, even if I don't feel it, you're worth it. He never stops. 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 Even if I don't see it, hey. He, even if I don't feel it, even if I don't feel it, you're worth it. He never stops. He never stops. He keeps on working. He keeps on moving. Even if I don't feel it, Woo! I, don't feel that I gotta word. believe. He never stop. He never stops working. Yeah, 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 yeah. He never stop. He never stop working. No matter how you feel it, he's still working. No matter what the doctor said, he's still working. No matter what it looks like, he's still working. He's still working. He's still working. Say, he's still working. He's still, he's still working. Say, he's still working. Say, he's still working. Say, he's still working. 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 He's still moving. He's still healing. He's still working. He's still 
are moving. You got to believe it. You got to receive it. Hallelujah. You got to know. You got to know. You got to know. You got to know. Woo. He's still working. He's still working. He's still working. Say, he's still working. Say, he's still working. Hey, he's still working. What? He's still working. What? What? He's still working. What? Somebody needed to hear that this morning. Somebody needed to know that this morning. Because you're looking at the circumstance. And you're asking yourself, where is God? You're asking yourself, where are you, God? What's going on? But he needed you to hear today. He's still working. He needed you to hear that today. He's still working. You got to believe it. He's still. Let me hear y'all say that. Come on, say he's still working. Come on, lift your hands and say that. You're still working. You're still working. Come on, you got to believe that today. No matter how you feel, come on, say. He's still working. You're still working. You're still working. The Bible says he never sleeps nor slumber. God don't ever go to sleep. He's always working. He's always moving. He's never changed. He's the same yesterday and forever and forever and forever and forever and forever and forever and forever. Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise, light in the dark. That is who you are. Way may promise keep. morning revivers welcome to our senior saint and baby dedication sunday morning service if this is your first time visiting the in-person service or on our facebook live pastor paul lady shannon and the rcmi family welcomes you and thank you for joining us today rcmi family these are your announcements for the week of september 29th 2024 the cafe is open and they will be serving a delicious meal Please make sure you visit our cafe to place your order. Please be kind to our staff. Love School is coming back. Get ready because we will need volunteers to help. The first Saturday in October from 12 to 3 p.m. We are still working on transportation, but we know it is time to start serving our Love School babies. If you would like to help, please sign up in the back of the Fellowship Hall today. Please mark your calendars for these upcoming events. Ordination service will be Sunday, October 6th. Pastor Appreciation Sunday will be Sunday, October 13th. The Women's Ministry presents Mind, Body, and Soul on Saturday, October 19th with dynamic speakers Dr. Erica Baxter, Marquetta Colbert, and Evangelist Miracle Oladale. Make sure you register for the wonderful event. Friends and Family Sunday will be Sunday, October 27th. Make sure you invite a friend on that day. We will have a great worship service and food and fellowship afterwards. RCMI 
Covenant Keepers Marriage Ministry is excited to invite you to the Winter Wonderland Gala, Saturday, December 7th. This adult only after five affair includes dinner by Divine Catering, music by DJ Tony Works, and more. Whether you're married, dating, or single, join us for Evening of Elegance. Register by October 22nd at 2024ckgala.eventbrite.com for only $50. There are several ways to give. If you would like to give by Cash App, use the Cash App name dollar sign R-E-V-C-E-N-M-I-N. If you're paying by Zelle, use the email rcmifinanceteam at gmail.com. You can also use your credit cards to swipe, so you do not need to write your numbers on the envelope. The finance team will be available before and after service to pay your giving using your credit cards. You still can give online as well, and thank you for your continued financial support for the ministry. We leave you with these words to think on. Don't criticize people's history. Prophesy their destiny. our Senior Saints Sunday and also our baby dedication. So we're going to keep all of our young people. You guys are staying in here today. I know they're like, when are we going to go to the youth? You'll be there next Sunday. Uh, but it's good to have everyone here. Again, next Sunday is our, what is the next Sunday? I'm, yeah, I'm still, I'm st- ordination. Okay, well, you know, when you're in the spirit, it's very difficult to come out <laughs> and do natural things, you know. My father used to call it dits. I'm dits. I'm drunk in the spirit. Amen. So we have ordination service. And then this, the, the October, the next Sunday after that, October the 13th, we're going to be celebrating our pastor, Pastor Paul, for pastor anniversary. Everybody needs to be here for that. You don't need to miss this. We're going to tell, the, tell him how much we love him and how much we appreciate the word that he's given all of these years. He has pastored this church will be his 20th year. His 20th year. Yeah. But he's been ministering in different capacities, whether it was the pastor of a Children's Ministry Super Church for well over 20 years. And so we want to celebrate him um, October the 13th, so you want to make sure that you're here. I'm standing to work, welcome any first-time visitors. If this is your first time being here today, we won't ask you to say anything. We just want to acknowledge you and just tell you how much we appreciate you coming. Any first-time visitors, can you stand, please? Don't be scared. So glad to have you. (laughs) Welcome. So glad to have you. We're so glad that you decided to join us today on behalf of Pastor Paul, Lady Shannon, the wonderful RCMI family. We're so glad that you decided to join us. They're putting something in your hand. If you could fill out that information and put it in the offering basket during our offering time, we just want to stay connected to you. And um, if you can all do me a favor, stand up, hug and greet somebody. Make sure you tell them welcome. Speak an encouraging word into their life. Especially make sure that our guests and visitors are welcome. And for those of you who are watching Facebook Live, so glad to have you on. Shawana, Angela, Stephanie, of course, our number one, Linda. <laughs> glad to have all of you on. If this is your first time. If we have any first time visitors, hey, Carol, glad to have you. Please make sure you put your name in the comment box and our wonderful RCM. My family will make sure that you are welcome. Hey, so glad that all of you. Hey, I'm Bert, Elder Bert. Hey, man, this, drunk in the spirit. That's right, I'm Bert. Hello, Tricia. Thank you so much for joining us. For all of you on our Facebook Live family, we appreciate you joining us. so much for joining us online and we're so glad that we can have online service so that you can watch every Sunday we appreciate that giving everybody virtual hugs online thank you again for joining us so thankful and grateful for all of our faithful online 
guests and visitors, you guys. Come on, let's give it up for all of our online guests and visitors. Yeah, they're clapping for you guys online. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we're just so grateful. If you can't be here in, in person, then we do offer online streaming services. And we don't do that just so that you won't come. We do want you to come if you're able. But I know some people are, un are unable, and so we want to make sure that they can still be blessed by the services through our Facebook Live. So we're grateful for all of those who are working to make that happen. Today is our Senior Saint Sunday, and we're going to go ahead and have one of our wonderful Senior Saints, Evangelist Tanya. She's going to give us our encouragement for the day. So let's put our hands together as she comes at this time. morning first. Give an honor to God, our wonderful Pastor Paul, Lady Shannon, Elder Sharon, and the rest of the pulpit. I am here to give you a few words of encouragement. My topic is grow where you planted. I was planted here. I walked through those doors June 2010. I joined Revival Center December 2010. I never missed a Bible study when I first started from 2010 to 2019. And excuse me, I missed nine, those total nine years. These books is every word that Pastor Paul and whoever else was doing Bible study, I wrote every one down. I can give you the, the title, the person who did it, and also the scriptures and the date. Grow where you're planted. God was molding me and I didn't even know it. I can look back at my niece, Marlene Foster, who tried to get me to come to this church, and I wouldn't come. I didn't hear God tell me that. I was church hurt, I was through, I was done. One morning, I heard the Lord say, go. I got up and I walked through those doors. And as I was walking in the door, I felt so at home. I heard God say, you're home. And as I looked up, there was Mother Spells coming toward me. And she says, she bowed down and she says, welcome queen. I didn't know you were coming, but God told me you were. I walked in, I was hungry. I wanted to praise, I wanted to pray, I wanted to love, I wanted to give, I wanted to worship. This church has taught me. I didn't go to church for 18 months. I stayed up on the hill of Oak Ridge and Gettysburg and I prayed to God for 18 months and I had my own church. I watched YouTube for the ministry. I sung, I can't sing, I sung I read scriptures, I prayed, I did everything that I thought God wanted me to do until he told me to come. I have a relationship with God and I want you guys to have a relationship with God. And wherever God leads you, wherever he tells you, don't just go and sit, grow. I came in, I wanted to be on the deaconess, I wanted to be in love school, I wanted to be at IWMA, I wanted to be, uh, what else did I want to be? Um, <laughs> um, um, prison ministry, 
outreach. I was hungry. I wanted to be everything that there was to be. And I was good at everything that I was doing. I stand before you. Also, I had lupus when I came in, so I couldn't even hardly walk. God has healed me. I am a healer <laughs> from God. I, I'm not a healer, but I am healed from God. God has healed me after 28 years of lupus. <laughs> Pastor Paul, he can do it. He can do it, Pastor Paul. He can do it. I took 13 pills every day faithfully for 28 years. My body feels much better now than it did with 13 pills a day. shouted before in my life. I stood right down here in front of Pastor Paul and I looked up to heaven and I said, God, let me shout at least one time. Let me see what it feels like. And I've been shouting ever since. <laughs> so, in closing, I say to you, Wherever you're planted, wherever you planted, grow. Grow in your ministry, your, your work, your church. Wherever you at, grow. Let God use you. Be who you're supposed to be. Love each other. Lord Jesus, I worship you. I thank you for everything you've done. In the name of Jesus, I give you all the glory. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands and thank the Lord for her healing. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him like you already got yours. Hallelujah. Magnify him like he done it for you. Hallelujah. He said, rejoice with them that rejoice. We rejoice with you today. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't know why people act the way they act. Some of you didn't know why Sister Tanya is always shouting in the aisle. Hallelujah. You might have judged her because you're saying, why is she doing that? She's doing too much. But you don't know what she was delivered from. You don't know what she was healed from. Hallelujah. That's not too much. That's not enough. Whoa. My God, my God, my God, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Let her run around the building. Hallelujah. Like the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years she had that issue. My God, but he said, if I could just touch the hem of his garments, holla, hey, I know I'll be made whole. Oh, hallelujah. 
And when you hold, you act differently when you hold. You shout differently when you hold. Hallelujah. I just forgot one more thing. When you brought up the issue of blood. I was on my knees one day at home. I knew I was healed in my heart, but the doctor says I wasn't healed. I got on my knees and I said to God, if you would let me say something or do something that means the same thing as the lady who touched you. Let me, I said, God, if I can do that, I know I can't touch you right now like that, but if you would let me say something or touch somebody, just to have the same meaning that this lady had. And he did it. He did it. He did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Her testimony may have freed you today. Her testimony should have encouraged you today. Her testimony should have reminded you of how good God is. We said he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. My God. Oh, 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 bless your name, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for people to share their testimony. We've been hearing that a lot. Hallelujah. Some, sometimes people are free because they know. If he did it for Sister Tanya, he said he's not a respected person. I said, if he did it for Sister Tanya, he can do it for me. Hey, do I got somebody that believes that today? Huh? Woo, my God. Oh. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh. Hallelujah. The waters are troubled. I hear that in the spirit. I said the waters are troubled. Oh my God, I hear the waters are troubled. You just need to jump in. Oh, I hear jump in. Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. The waters are. Whoa. Jump in. Oh my God. I said the waters are troubled. Jump in. Woo. Oh. Jump in. 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 Jump in, woo! Jump in, jump in, woo! Jump in, jump in! Hey, my God, woo! Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! See, you don't have to understand it to believe it. You just gotta believe it. Sometimes we're looking for an understanding. God confounds our mind. You can't understand Him. You can't understand the way He does things. He just asks you to have faith and believe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You just got to believe. Woo, hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands right now. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Oh, we magnify you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, God. For you are good and worthy to be praised. You are awesome and mighty. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. Glory to you. Hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Hallelujah. We bless his name, Jesus. Pastor Paul said, if you are sick, we're going to lay hands on the sick today. We're going to follow instructions. If you need healing your body, come on up to this altar right now. Hallelujah. Oh. Healing your body. No weapon formed against you. Hallelujah. Shall prosper. We're going to have the elders lay hands on you. 
Come on, lift your hand and believe. It said, call for the elders of the church. We just had Pastor McKinstry talk about praying. As they lay hands on you for whatever it is, to believe that you are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, no weapon formed against you. Come on, say, shall. I want to make sure that pastor or the elders anoint you today. Oh, no weapon formed against you. Come on, say, shall prosper. It won't work no more. It won't work. Oh, God will do what he said he will do. Oh.
There are some things that's, that's being healed in her heart right now. She's receiving healing right now in her heart. And as a family, you need to cover her and keep her. Because she has believed so many lies, the Holy Spirit told me. So many lies about her. She's believed them. And I canceled every, every lie that has been told. She cannot believe those lies. They have been nothing but lies. She will believe what the Lord declares over her life. She will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord, my God. I'm telling you, God has yet to do great things. It's a story for her. So y'all got to cover her like you have never covered her before. My God, in the name of oh, my I, oh, breathe on her, breathe, breathe. Oh, my God, woo. My God, hey, Holy Spirit, breathe on her. Breath of life, oh, my God. Power. Dunamis power. She has a call on her life. Oh my goodness. I mean, she has a call on her life. Oh my God. Woo! Oh. Fire. I'm talking about fire. Fire, fire burn. Fire burn in her belly. My goodness. And I'm talking about everything that has happened in her past. God has already forgotten, but she's got to forget. God is not concerned about your past, sweetheart. He's looking at your future. Because he said, your ladder will be greater than your past. I said, your ladder will be greater. Oh, my God. Your ladder will be greater. Woo. Her ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater than your past. Because all things are possible. Possible. They're possible. Yes, they are. They're possible. Oh, all things are possible. All things are possible.
somebody celebrate God right there. You see what happens when you share your testimony? You see what happened when Sister Tanya shared her testimony? You see how many people were released and healed today to walk into their destiny? That's why you can't keep your mouth closed. That's why you got to share what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah! Oh my God! You can't keep your mouth closed. Woo! My goodness. There's an anointing on your testimony. I'm speaking to somebody today. There's an anointing to share. You've been keeping your mouth closed. But there are breakthroughs that are waiting on your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. And this has been a good service, amen. <laughs> now we about to dedicate some babies right now. Amen. Come on, we about to dedicate some babies back to the Lord. And before I do that, I do want to say this because I forget to mention this in our announcements that we have. A, a, we always call him President Carlos Buford is here today. He has his voter registration table in the back. I love him because he's all about making people informed. And he's always making sure that you know what you're supposed to be doing and that you understand and that you're an informed voter. You're not just voting just to be voting, but you know what you're voting for. So he's going to be in the back. So if you have any questions to make sure that all of your information is correct, because we all know that every election is an important election. There's no election that's not. But I'm thankful that we have someone that's a part of our church that really has a passion for seeing people vote informed, to be informed before they vote and to know what they're doing and to make sure everything is right. He just um, registered my daughter. She turned 18, heaven registered to vote. So if you're not registered to vote, he'll be here to do that. Stand up, Carlos, so that people can see you. Make sure you visit him. Everybody needs to visit him in the back of the fellowship hall. Thank God for him. So we're going to go ahead and start with our baby dedication. When I call you up, you can bring your baby up and um, anyone who's here to uh, surround them in your village, what we call your village. You can bring your village up. Okay. Or I don't know how I'm going to get this right. Arias. Is that right? Arias. 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 See how she told me? Arias, come on down. You're getting dedicated. Seven and family. Jakai. Baby Jakai. And Amara. Is Amara? Is that, is that right, Nate? Did I say that right? Amara? Okay. We're going to scooch y'all down a little bit. Oh, okay. I'm going to pass it. So, baby, baby dedication, we, we need to understand something. Baby dedication is not salvation. Your child does not get saved going through this process, so we want to make that clear. But the Lord had me, and I don't normally do this, but when I was thinking about baby dedication, he wanted me to read this particular scripture. And um, it's in 1 Samuel, verse 27. And it's talking about Hannah. And if any of you know the story of Hannah, she was barren and she wanted a child. She prayed and prayed, and the Lord granted her a child. And this was the scripture that goes along with this. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him. And it says, therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. And she had a son named Samuel. And the Lord gave her Samuel, and she gave Samuel back to the Lord. And what that means, or what that means is, when you're saying, I'm dedicating my baby, it means that you are making an effort to say, I want to raise my child up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So Samuel wasn't somebody that just went to the temple, but he ended up being a great prophet and declaring the works of the Lord, all in the Old Testament. And so baby dedication is about saying that I want to commit to make sure that I raise my child up in the church. It really is. So you can't dedicate your baby and then don't ever bring him to church. The, and, and the thing about it is, I believe that you can teach your child, but there's something about coming together. Because sometimes your child won't listen to you. Y'all gonna know this when y'all get older, but they'll listen to somebody else. Sometimes your child, you'll, you'll, you'll be telling them this and this and this. The same person, somebody different will come and tell them the same thing and they'll be like, oh really? And you're thinking, myself, I just told you that. So sometimes even being around people in a church setting helps your child to have other people that they're accountable to. 
So when you're saying, I'm bringing my child here to dedicate my child back to the Lord, because guess what? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Your child came from God. He gave you that gift. So it's important for you to raise your child up, to love him, to serve him, to honor him. And, you know, as I've looked through the years, the kids that have been raised up in this church are doing amazing things in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, with these, some, the kids that have grown up in this church and have been involved, they are going out and doing some incredible, amazing things. So it's important to have that foundation. And to, because th listen here, y'all, these kids are not being raised in the church now. Y'all do know that. Kids are, don't know about the church. When I had a kid come and ask me, y'all got a pool up there on the pulpit? Y'all swimming at church? I was like, <laughs> we, we, we baptizing people. That's not a swimming pool. But, but kids don't know. But if you're dedicating them to God, then you're committing yourself to say, I'm dedicating to you, Lord, and I want to raise them up in the way they should go. So that means if you're not where you need to be, you need to get there. Because you can't raise your child up loving God if you don't love him. Because your child is going to do exactly what you do. And some of you have some generational curses that need to be broken. Now, I don't normally say this. This is the word of the Lord. He told me to say this. I never do this, but I, he specifically said, so there are some generational curses that need to be broken, and it starts with that baby. It starts here. That child does not have to deal with the things that you had to deal with coming up. They can have a completely different life depending on how you raise them. Amen? Okay, now we're going to go ahead into our normal baby dedication. <laughs> as children were welcomed by Jesus, so they are welcomed as part of this congregation. As a new member of a family in this body, they're an integral part of this church. They are recipients of his blessing and mission and experience his fellowship and traditions. As parents bring their little ones in presentation to the Lord, we covenant as a congregation to surround the child and the family with the support of the people of God. In this right today, parents publicly commit themselves to provide a home in which their child children will grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord where he or she will learn of Christ and his ways and be encouraged to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Parents, you are the child's primary pastor and greatest influence for good and righteousness. These scriptures, Matthew 18 and 10 says, Take heed that you do not spies any of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Isn't that a beautiful thing that your children have angels that are right there in the midst of God? Your children have those angels. Amen. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7 says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, that they shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and they shall walk by the way when they lie down and when they rise up. You should be teaching your kids about the things of God. That should be, that's your job if you're dedicating them today. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not, not, not depart from it. That means if you train them up in the ways of the world, they won't depart from it. Your kids are going to stay in the world. If you train them up in the ways of God, they'll come back. They may stray away, but they'll come back. So building a foundation is important. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, parents, and I'm going to ask you to answer by we do. Almighty God has been gracious to you in giving you the gift of this child. Do you now present your child before God in dedication? And we say we do because your village is a part of helping you support and raise your child. It is your purpose to bring up the way is it your purpose to bring up your child in the ways of the Lord it is we do we will continue will you continue to love the child God has given you so that they will experience the meaning of trust and grace will you endeavor to provide a Christian home and atmosphere for your child this is important so don't say we do if you ain't gonna do it hold on will you teach him or her in the Christian faith surround them around Christian influences through the church and other relationships and encourage him or her to faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, now we're going to have the elders. They're going to come and stand behind you. They're going to anoint the baby and all of you with oil. And we're going to have all of our wonderful Arsene My members stand at this time. I charge you as members and friends to accept these children into the life of the congregation here at Revival Center. You need to share in the responsibility for his and her nature in Christ. And as a response of faith and commitment, will you as members of this congregation pray with us as pastor prays over these children? They're anointing the children at this time. And as Revival Center Ministries members, when we see these babies growing up in the church, it is our job to encourage them, to love on them. I, you know, I want to say personally that when my daughter uh, graduated and we had a, a party, 
and all of the blessings and the love and the encouragement that she got. She said to me, she said, Mom, I did not know that they loved me this much. And so when you see these young people walking around, speak a word of encouragement to them. Even if it's saying, let me bless you with something. Let them know that you love them. That's a part of them growing up in a nurturing church environment. And one thing about Revival Center Ministries, we're all about love. We, we, we want to love you because the Bible says love covers a multitude of fault. So when you bring your children to our super church or to our nursery, they're going to be taught the love of God. They're going to be taught the, 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 the Bible. And we want you guys to do that. So we hope that you are a part of that. So pastor is going to pray at this time. Right now we declare and decree blessings upon these children. Lord, keep your hand upon their lives. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. We come against the defilement, predators, people who don't mean them, harm, mean them harm. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that the Lord will lift up a standard when the enemy comes in like a flood. The Lord will lift up a standard. So we speak blessings upon the parents, give them guidance, give them wisdom. Direct their steps. Only allow the right people around them. In the name of Jesus. So we give you glory, honor, and praise right now. In Jesus' name. And let the church say, amen, amen, amen. Okay, when we call the baby up, if we can just have the family, mom, dad come up. We're going to give you. If it's, make sure it's blue. Uh, just want you to know what we have for you. We have their first baby Bible. And then I, I love these. Um, we have the power of a praying parent. So this is something that we encourage all of you parents to read so that you know how to pray and cover your child every day. Amen? So when we call you up, get your certificate and your gift. Uh, Jakai. Seven. Arius, that's Arius. <clears throat> I thought I was doing it right. Areas. <laughs> Still got a room. Amara. <laughs> Let's give our wonderful parents and our babies a hand clap. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Okay. Amen. Now we're going to get ready to give. If you need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hand. We're going to do that before pastor comes up and preaches. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And our wonderful welcome team will give you an envelope. Can we turn the air up just a little bit, y'all? Is it, it, can, it is. Oh, Father. I'm sitting here sweating. <laughs> the air is up. How low can we go? <laughs> Somebody check that tip. <laughs> I'm in fire. My, my, look, look, my father used to say, there's a hotter place than this. It's called hell. You don't want to go there. <laughs> he used to always say that, boy. He'd be like, there's a hotter place than this. We just want some... In this October, I'm telling you, this heat don't want to leave, y'all. It don't want to leave. Fall is my favorite season of the year. <laughs> it's jacket, but it's cool. It's not too hot, because right now I'm like, oof. Amen, amen. Wonderful opportunity for you to give into the kingdom of God. Everyone should put something in their hand to give. You know, I, when, I, when you think about that scripture, it's more blessed to give than to receive. 
you have to ask yourself, what position do you want to be in? Do you want to be in the blesser's position or the receiver's position? And I don't know about you, but I want to be in the blesser's position. You know, I want to be the one blessing. I want to be the one giving. I want to be giving. I want to be the blesser. You're more blessed when you give. And so that's really a powerful statement when you think about that. So you ask yourself, Lord, put me in the position where I can give. I can give to those. Because guess what? You can never outbeat God giving. You know that song? You can beat God giving no matter how you try. Do I got some old folks that know that song? This is Senior Saints. You, come on, Senior Saints, can beat God giving. Uh-huh. No matter how you try. Why? The more you give, the more you give, the more he'll give to you. See, Corey Young, he don't know this. Just keep on giving <laughs> because it's really true. Hey, you can be God-giving no matter how you try. They all used to sound the same. <laughs> All right, y'all stand on your feet. Let's get ready to give. Amen. I know Pastor Paul won't be before us long, but. <laughs> Corey, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your offering, your phone. You know, I say your phone because a lot of people give via Cash App or Bell. But just thank God that you're in a position to give. Hallelujah. Thank you that I can give today. Hallelujah. Oh, so Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for every seed that is sown today understanding that that seed is to build up the kingdom of God. We thank you for the opportunity that you put Revival Center Ministries to be a blessing in this community. And we thank you, Lord God, for just blessing those who have a heart to continue to sow. We give this to you. We give this to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys come on up. Walk on up. Walk on up. Give, 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 give. The ushers and the, our welcome team will lead you out. Hey. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise. Come on and praise the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. Say. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Everybody say, bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord, bless the Lord with me. Everybody say, bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me, bless the Lord with me. Everybody say, bless the Lord, bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah, say hallelujah. Everybody lift your hands and say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, everybody do a dance now. Come on, everybody do a dance. Hey, come on, everybody do a dance. Hey, come on, everybody do a dance. Come on, everybody. Come on, do a dance. Come on, everybody do a dance. Hey, come on, everybody do a dance. Hey, come on, everybody do a dance. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Hey, come on, everybody. Come on, clap. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Hey, come on, everybody clap your hands. Hey. Come on, everybody, clap it. Hey, come on. Wait. Come on, everybody, wave your hands. Hey, come on, everybody, wave your hands. Hey, come on, everybody, wave your hands. Come on, everybody, come on and wave. Come on, everybody, wave your hands. Come on, everybody, wave your hands. Come on, everybody, wave your hands. Hallelujah, say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 
Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, bless the Lord, everybody. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down the same, my name is, his name is great to be praised. It feels so good in here. I brought, I brought my notebook pad up, my notes for the sermon today, but I think Tanya preached already. I'm going to try to just jot some things down in your spirit. It's just been a wonderful service. The baby's being dedicated, all the beautiful babies. Give it up for the baby. Give it up for the senior saints. So that it's, it's, it's 12, 13. Take your seat. Let me, let me get this. Give it up for Winfred Addison walking in. <laughs> God did what he wanted to do today. But I want to say these words. There's only one God. His name is Yahweh. There's only one will. It's God's will. And there's only one way. It's God's way. There's only one God. His name is Yahweh. There's one will. It's God's will. And there's only one way. It's God's way. Y'all get that? Give God a praise if you got that. I have a hard time struggling with this thing called choice. Y'all bear with me. Pray for Pastor Paul because I, I, have, I have a major issue with this thing we call choice. The world is so messed up because of this thing we got called choice. The world is so messed up because of choice. People are making bad choices. And it's messing our world up. So I have a problem. I had to, me, me and God had a conversation last night about this thing called choice. I want to dig deep. I, 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 I want to I stay surface. I want to keep digging on, on this thing called choice. But I recognize that everything God takes ownership in, he makes it known. Watch this, watch this. He takes ownership in everything except choice. Watch this, watch this, follow me. He, he, he says, your body is my temple. Your body is my temple, God said. One scripture, he said, all souls are mine. Y'all ever read that scripture? He said, all souls are his. And he said, the, when, when you die, he said, the, the dirt, the body goes back to the dirt, but the spirit returns to God who made it. So he takes ownership of your soul, your body, and your spirit, except choice. Because, watch this, the title of my message is, The Choice is Yours. Woo! The choice is yours. He said, I gave you the choice. I, I own your body, I own your soul, I own your spirit, but choice is yours. Now, now I want y'all to grasp that. Choice is yours. The ch I've just heard that most the choice is yours. The choice is yours. God don't operate by choice. He operates by commandment. What, let, 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 what, this is what he did to Adam. He said, Adam, I command you don't eat from this tree. It, it wasn't a choice. It was a commandment. Just like when you tell your child, go clean the restroom. We ain't got, we ain't, we ain't gonna go on this. You don't got an option. That's a command. Go clean the bathroom. And that's what God told him in the garden. Don't eat from this tree. It wasn't a choice. It was a command. 
Choice don't change you, command does. God don't operate by choice, he operates by command. He tells you what to do. And you do it. I said, I just hurt myself. Watch this. Adam made the choice. Adam made the choice when he ate the fruit. And this is what the Bible says. By one man's disobedience, many were made what? God said, I didn't make you a sinner. I didn't make God said, I didn't make you a sinner. Choice did. <laughs> I, I said I wasn't going to get into this, but I might as well. Let me, let me go like this. God, don't interfere with your choices. If you want to be a crack addict, go ahead and smoke, pot, smoke crack. If you want to be a heroin addict, go ahead and be a heroin addict. Shoot the needle in your veins. If you want to be an alcoholic, God don't stop you. He, one thing God don't do, he don't interfere with your choice. You can be whatever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. God don't interfere. It, it, if God interfere, I have, oh, God, help me, Jesus. What, 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 what? If God interfered with choices, we wouldn't have a bad world that we have today. He, 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 he allows a guy to go into a children's school and kill 26 kids. Why didn't God interfere with that? Why didn't God stop the boy from shooting those 26 kids? Because he don't interfere with choice. The choice is yours. You can be whatever you want to be. And God ain't going to interfere with it. Because the choice is yours. God's murder each other like dogs. And why ain't God interfering? Why ain't God stopping this nonsense that's going on? If you, if you only just step, there's some things I have to ask God. Only if you interfere, stop them. Don't let them do it. God said, the choice is yours. And you can do whatever you want to do. Let me tell you this. Choices made God a judge. God didn't create us to judge us. But choice made us sinners. And he had to become a judge. He said, if I made you a sinner, I couldn't judge you. Because I made you a sinner. I couldn't judge if I made you a sinner. I can't judge it. I can't judge if I made you a sinner. He said, but choice made you a sinner. So that means I have to judge you. That's why this thing called choice is something you got you to really think about. You make so many bad choices. Choice after choice after choice. You are the sum total of the choices you make. And choice... When Adam ate the fruit, this is what the devil said. God knows the day you eat that fruit, you're going to become a god. And Adam became his own god because choice is independent from God. He made his choice, and his choices made him. Your choices make you because choice is your god. And it makes you everything it you, you choose to be. And they ate the fruit and they became their own God. They declared independent, independent from God. I can do whatever I want to. It feels good to do what I want to. It makes me feel like a God. It feels so good. That's why I smoke when I want to smoke. Because I'm a God. I can smoke when I want to smoke. I, I'm such a God that I can add, I can, I can judge God. I can tell you he don't exist. And he made me. But, but when you make, when choices interfere, it interferes with, with your communication with God. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. This thing called choice took, took me to a deeper study. I had to, I had to begin to do the study. And, and watch this, watch this, watch this. Lucifer made a choice, and he didn't stop worshiping. 
He just started worshiping himself. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to quit this. But I said, we use this statement. It gets on my nerves when I think about it. It really hurts me. God gave us a free will. But he gave us choice because he wanted us to choose him based upon our free will. You, you heard that? You heard that? Yeah, he, he wants us to have a choice. So when we choose him, it makes him happy. You want to know what makes God happy? Just obey him. Don't choose him. Obey him. And he'll be happy. But can I? I'm going to read a scripture because y'all don't think I'm spiritual enough. But let me read the scripture. Acts. Put on the screen. Acts 17. I'm going to show you something. Everybody think God need our choice. God, God loves our choice. I'm going to show you what God thinks about choice. I'm going to tell you what he thinks about choice. If, it, if, it was, if, it, if this thing called choice, it's a God. And, and, and Adam, when he ate the fruit, he made the choice. God said, I take ownership of everything else except choice. Choice is yours. Watch it. Acts 17, verse 21, God that made the world, and thank you, God, and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he dwell not in temples made with man's hands. This church was made with man's hands. God, God dwells in your temple. Watch this. Neither is he worshipped with man's hands as though he needs anything. Let me tell you something. God don't need nothing. He don't need your choice to make him happy. He don't need your worship to make him happy. He don't need, he is God. And he, he operates by command. This is not a democracy. Ain't no voting going on. He's not worshiped with man's hands. He don't need nothing. He gets to all life, breath, and strength. The choice is yours. Watch this. I'm going I'm, I'm to go ahead and go there. I'm going to go ahead and go there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going. The Bible says we are slaves to God. We are God's slave. Y'all ain't never read that? You are, you are his slave. No, you don't like the word slave. Let me use this word. You're his servant. But the same, it's the same word, slave. In the Bible, it's the same word. You know how you're his slave? Because you have no choice. Watch this. Oh, this is, y'all got quiet on me. Let me, let me tell you this. Slaves, us African Americans, when we went to slavery, when they made us slaves, slaves don't have no choice. And you are a slave to God. You call him master. Watch this. I know it's sensitive because, because slavery ain't right. Slavery, I, I, I want you to get it spiritually. Be in the spirit. He, he said, or maybe this will help you. I bought you with a price. You are saved. You do what he tells you to do. Independence is not free. <laughs> I'm preaching better than y'all saying anything. to be a God. The choice is yours. Maybe this will help you.
Jesus goes into a garden, he gets on his knee, and he's crying out, Father, take this away from me. What is he battling? He's battling choice. Nevertheless, not my will. He said, this we said, this choice thing is so terrible. Take it away from me. Because I keep dating the wrong men. I keep hanging out with the wrong women. I keep cussing. I keep lying. I keep hating. I keep fighting. I just do so many things. I come to church and I and I, I wave my hands, but I leave here, go to the bar, get drunk. I, ha- I take it away from me, cause I. It, do you know if I if I didn't have a choice, I would be further along in life now. If if, if I didn't have a choice. I would have more money. I would be in a better position. I would have better friends. But this choice thing keep putting me in a jam because I can't stop. I can't stop doing it. Because the choice is yours. Take it away from me. Watch this, I'm closing. I, Abraham said, come on, Isaac. We're going to worship. And he packed up his bag, took his son to the mountain. And what he called worship, God called obedience. God said, I love you, Abraham, because all you did was obey my voice. And what you call worship, all worship is, is not when you lift your hands and say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, worship is when you just do what he say. When you do what he say, and when you obey his voice, you're worshiping him. But anybody can come to church and And go home and be a devil. God don't function through choice. He functions through command. Command changes you. Choices don't. I think of the stupid stuff I done done. As a Christian, I don't, don't, don't sit there and look at me like I'm the only one, like I'm the only one that has done some crazy stuff as a Christian. I broke so many of God's commandments because of my choice. God put a command in the garden, but Adam made the choice. And so many things I wish I could take back. So many things I wish I could take back. But the choice, man, you keep making me say that. The choice is yours. God, you can take a horse to the well, but you can't make him drink. (laughs) 
it's when you do the word that makes you blessed. It's not the hearer of the word that's blessed. It's the doer of the word. The one that obeys the word of God. God can bring the word to you, but he can't make you, he can't make you choose it. You got to do it. Thank God for doers of the word. So watch this. I'm, 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 I'm so stuck on this. Y'all, y'all, y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. Salvation is when you come back in alignment with God. It's not, it's not about choice. It's about becoming aligned with God. Doing what he wants you to do. No questions asked. But choice has the world messed up. Romans 6, put on the screen. I'm going to read one scripture. Romans 6. Let me read this scripture, then we can go. It's 1233. I've only been up here 15 minutes. <laughs> and, and, and it's not by my choice. The Holy Ghost is in charge of my life. Go to Romans 6, 13. Look at 13. God don't interfere with your choice, but he can influence your choice. He influ- he, 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 he'll influence it. This is what, this is what, watch it, watch what he said. I, I set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Watch what God says. I can only bring you to the well. I can't make you drink. So I, I set it before you. I'm influencing you. I can't interfere with your choice. I can only say, choose life. I can only tell you what to choose. But you got to make the choice. It's your, the choice is yours. Go to the next verse. For sin shall not have, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Next verse. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Next verse. Know ye not that what, to whom you yield yourself, servants to obey, that's whose servant you are. That's, that, that's simple. Whoever you obey, that's whose servant you are, slave. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from what? You became the servants of what? Next verse. Watch it. I speak as a man of men. Go to the next verse. For when you were the servants of sin, you were what? That's why I want you. I want you to look at that again. Look at that again. When you were the servants of sin, you were what's the word? Say independence. You were you were independent. You declared independence from God. You didn't have to do what He wants you to do. When you were servants of sin, you, didn't, you were independent from God. You declared independent. They told Jesus, you being a son, you being a man, make yourself God. He says, did, did the scriptures not call you God? And the word of God can't be broken. You're God. But you're the God of choices. Your God is choices. They said, we're Abraham's son. And we are in bondage to no man. Yeah, that's a good one right there. We're free. Independence is not free. It costs you something. And it costs God his son. Choices cost God his son. Choices cost God his son because he had to pay the price because he's the only true God. And I bless his name. And I honor him. 
God owns your body. He owns your spirit. He owns your soul. But the choice is yours. Give God a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Did y'all hear it? Now, when I come back, I think I'm going to take part two. I want, I want, to, I want to talk to y'all uh, part two of this because I'm, I'm, I'm doing my research. I'm still researching this. This is, a, this is a phenomenal. I want you to hear this is phenomenal. I want y'all to know that. This is, this is something, something is going on. God wants his, his obedience. All he wants is obedience. Obey God. Solomon was young when he became king. And he told God, God said, he gave offering to God, and God said, whatever you want, ask me. He said, I'm, I, I, I tell you what I want. I'm a child, and I'm a king running a kingdom, not a democracy. He said, and I don't know how to come in or go out. Give me wisdom. So that I can make He says, I, he called it judgment. All I'm, trying to, I'm, all I'm trying to show you is you're not mature enough to make the right choice. How many of y'all, your choices got, got you in the jail? Anybody got in the jail? Anybody, your choice got you in the jail? Wave your hand real high. Yeah. Anybody, your you can, you can do the wave up in here with sent Jesus to experience this thing called choice. And I wish I can tell you when he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Could I help you understand something? What makes you think he would talk to God? Have you ever considered he could have been talking to himself? And his God let him down. How many times have my choices let me down? And forsook me. And left me hanging. With another bad situation. I'm sick of it. Take it away from me. Father, I thank you. I honor you. In Jesus' name. Y'all stand up. Let's go home. Did y'all get something today? I'm not going to preach nothing that don't have scripture and Bible backing it up. Make sure the scripture, line up line, preach up on preach. I love you. Have a safe trip home. And may God continue to bless you. And you live by command, not choice. God bless you. I'll tell you.